Tree identification number 10. In this video, we're going to look at buckeye, a couple of the cypresses, and eastern hemlock. Start off with buckeye. Scientific name for buckeye is going to be Aesculus speciosa. Speciosa meaning there are several different species of buckeye found in Georgia, so we're not going to focus too much on one or the other. The sample we have here is actually a red buckeye, as you can see. Um, but for the buckeye, and here's a better sample here, um, the leaf shape is a compound. It's going to be the, one of the last compound leaves we're going to look at, um, and it has a palmately compound leaf shape. Okay, so shaped like the palm of your hand. Okay, the leaves themselves, when looking at the stem, are opposite. Okay, so you can see how these branch and they're opposite from one another. So leaf arrangement is opposite and palmately compound. Okay, the leaves are three to six inches long with five to seven leaflets in that palmately compound leaf shape. So you can see this has five right here. Sometimes I'll have six or seven. Okay, um, when looking at the fruit, um, first it is a flower kind of uh, shaped kind of in a cone and then it turns into a brown capsule as you can see this one does and when this capsule opens you have these buckeyes so Aesculus speciosa and this is buckeye or more specifically this one is the red buckeye alright up next we're gonna look at two deciduous conifers the only two on the Georgia list. And the first one we're going to look at is bald cypress. All right. The bald cypress scientific name is Taxodia distichum. And the bald cypress, a lot of people um, kind of recognize these or know these pretty well from that flaring trunk that helps support it in swamp like conditions and the protruding root knees that come out of the water <clears throat> when it is in a, a very wet area like that. But when looking at the needles, because we're going to have two cypresses we look at, um, the leaves are flattened and they're feathery. Okay, So you'll hear a lot of people say that it's like a green feather. Okay, That flat fan-shaped needle is very significant on the bald cypress. Typically, the needles are anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch long. Okay, And then it's also going to have a cone that's globose or just round, shaped like a globe, that's two to three and a half centimeters um, in diameter and typically has anywhere from 10 to 25 scales on it. So the bald cypress, typically found in wet areas, um, sometimes used in the landscape um, across areas where they can give it enough water. Taxodium distichum. Okay, the other deciduous conifer uh, that we're going to talk about, so remember deciduous is it's going to lose its leaves um, near the end of the fall there, um, is the pond cypress. The pond cypress is Taxodium ascendens. Okay, on the pond cypress you're going to see scale-like needles that don't really open like the bald cypress. Okay, so you can see how these needles don't really open up like we just saw on the bald cypress. They're referred to as spirally oppressed, which means um, that they're not really in a single plane like we saw the bald cypress had those flat needles. Um, the pond cypress does not. Okay, so pond cypress Taxodium ascendens. Lastly, we're going to look at the eastern hemlock. The eastern hemlock scientific name is Suga canadensis. Um, and when looking at the eastern hemlock, we, we typically see this tree found in more mountainous areas, okay, um, and wet mountainous areas. Um, so it, it's got a really distinct look to it, but the dark green on the top of the needles and then you look at the underside 
you've got that white streak on the underside of the needles, which really helps differentiate it from most everything else you're going to see, um, like the bald cypress or anything like that. Okay, um, so the needles are going to grow from two sides, and they're typically in half inch to three quarters of an inch in length. Okay, they're flat. And looking at the tree as a whole, the tips or the the tips at the crown are are going to droop, so it gives a kind of a drooping appearance from the hemlocks. And they also have very probably the tiniest cones we're going to see on any of the Georgia trees we go over. Um, tiny little cones at the end that are typically about a half inch um, in diameter um, that are very significant in their identification characteristics. So just in review, let's look at these again. Um, first, we talked about a palmately compound leaf shape, okay, with the big brown capsule that opens up into these guys. That's going to be the buckeye, Aesculus speciosa. Then we talked about this tree, very feathery type feel to it. Um, the needles are kind of branching a flat plane there. And this is going to be bald cypress. Okay, so taxodium distichum. The other cypress we talked about was this guy. Remember, it doesn't necessarily branch out like the bald cypress does as you can see right here, okay, typically a more narrow needle shape, okay, this is Taxodium ascendens, or also known as the Pond Cypress. And then, we only had four, four trees on this video, um, we saw this tree with that dark glossy green on top, and the white streaks on the underside of the needle, Eastern Hemlock, Suga canadensis. And that's the four trees for this video.